uh, Brian, the last time I saw you, you were at Sun and Fun, and you had a little biplane. <laughs> twin. <laughs> twin. With twin. Ultra light. Yeah. But you're up here in the Midwest LSA Expo. Uh, Chris Collins puts on a great little show here. And uh, you brought a new airplane. What's this called? This one's called the Woodpecker. Actually, it's, uh, it's not the newest one. It's the first one that I designed. I flew it first back in 2013 and uh, brought it to its first show at Sun and Fun 2015. And at Sun and Fun, it was an award winner, if I remember right. That is correct. At uh, Sun and Fun, it won Best Innovation. And uh, then I took it to Oshkosh, and it won the Stan Zick Award for Outstanding Design Contribution after that. And you won another one just at this, did you not, at Sun and Fun? Uh, I took this one back to Sun and Fun one other time. It won Best Wood. They, um, they said I had to do something different to it to win Best Innovation again. <laughs> but uh, last year I met you, or I'm sorry, this year in April I met you with my Lightning Bug aircraft. You actually found it over in the corner and, and brought Dan over and, and did a really nice video. I appreciate that. Now, this airplane here, like the Lightning Bug, it was built for under $3,000, was it not? Yeah, the Lightning Bug is a $3,000 total airplane. This one's firewall back $3,000. Uh, it's got a lock homing in the front, so there's uh, there's some more money in the engine. But uh, still, the rest of the airframe is built out of locally obtained and mostly uh, all handcrafted <laughs> parts. Uh, you know that I didn't I didn't buy anything. I built everything, so it's just raw materials. Now this is um, mostly wood used in the airplane. Yes, sir. Uh, the whole fuselage is is wood and uh, plywood, cabinet plywood. Uh, the wing is built with foam, ribs, that's uh, somewhat typical construction. Some other airplanes are using that. It's got about 250 hours on it now. It's been holding up great, flying great. I, I really like that construction. Now, there's a lot of little unique things that you've done to this airplane, though. For example, I, I noticed the exhaust is a little different uh, than most that you would see. Yeah, those are, uh, are kind of like my, my glass packs on my 71 Chevy truck. But uh, they do give it that little Harley throaty sound, and um, it was fun getting the cans anyway. They um, also use the caps as the autopilot knobs too, so uh, keeping the theme going. I was hoping to get sponsored by Coors Light. I haven't heard from them yet. <laughs> now, you also have an autopilot on this. Let's go into the uh, interior of the airplane and have a look at some of the interior stuff. Sure. Now, this is a, a fairly wide cabin. Uh, what are you, about 42, 44 inches? I think I'm 41. 41? So there's plenty of room for me and a 250 pound friend of mine. Uh, and you, it looks like you've got a little friend back there now. Yeah, that's my, my woodpecker. My, my wife insisted we got that at our, with our Disney vacation. Because this airplane is actually called a woodpecker, is it not? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, are, do you sell plans for this? Is it available to you just a sort of one-off design that you've it is. It's just uh, it's me experimenting and uh, learning and showing everyone else what I've come up with just to promote the sport. And if they were to look at something like this, they could do something like this themselves for the there, kind of time and money that you put into there it. There is a lot of innovation in it. Uh, everywhere you look, there's, there's some things that haven't been used on real airplanes before. Um, right off the bat, this was the first airplane that I used the flight controller from a drone to work as an autopilot. Uh, I've put multiple different versions of that in the airplane, some of them fully autonomous so I can fly headings and navs and capture altitudes and, and have primary flight displays on iPads that uh, display maps. Basically all the stuff that uh, the drone guys are developing. Um, since then, I've actually pulled all that out and I'm right back down to the very basic $20 board, a KK board, that is just an attitude holder. So, uh, via my one amp hour model airplane battery that runs the whole system, that when everything's running is only 200 milliamp hours, so that's really a five hour battery uh, that, that runs the whole thing. When I turn the autopilot on or turn the whole system on, then I can independently control via the potentiometers all the trim tabs and control surfaces that are on the airplane. Those are two little subsystems that are ailerons on the wing, a um, trim tab on the elevator, and even a, a yaw, a, an external rudder, uh, to, to trim it. When the autopilot comes on, then it just hunts for level. 
So I just made a two hour and 45 minute flight from south of Memphis to Mount Vernon here and basically sit back and just monitor the systems with an occasional tweak here and there. But uh, certainly gives you time to, to look around and, and um, not have to be right on top of the airplane. For a hundred bucks, that's, uh, that's a, lot of, a lot of help. Now what does this airplane control system wise, you're just using standard stick and rudder control on it, uh, flaps on it? No sir, I, didn't, I decided not to go with flaps. Generally flaps, are more drag than lift. I mean, on a normal airplane that flies in these kind of airspeeds, you typically see five miles an hour or so difference. Well, um, when this thing's all loaded up, it stalls at 35. I landed at 45-ish. Uh, the complexity of flaps really just don't warrant the uh, complexity and extra weight that um, that I see, not in an airplane like this. Okay. What kind of cruise speed do you come in at? Well, it's clean. It's a, it's a, it didn't start this way, but after I got comfortable with the airplane after multiple test flights and realized it was going to be a good platform to, to uh, continue with, I started putting on the fairings and the fillets and, and cleaning it all up. And now wide open, it's 135, 140 miles an hour. I generally cruise at about 2200 RPM at less than five gallons an hour and 100 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah, it's really efficient. In fact, um, the first time I took the Sun and Fun flying with an air cam at ridiculous slow speeds, you know, 70 miles an hour or so, at uh, 15, 1700 RPM, I had some three and a half gallon an hour legs. So um, I, I, I couldn't believe that. Now, what kind of uh, fuel capacity do you have on it and where is the fuel? Well, I've got two main tanks. Uh, one in each wing that's just over seven gallons. Those both feed into a, a header tank or a nose tank that's six gallons. Um, I just made that leg from Memphis. This is my sight gauge that comes from the mains and then I'll watch it until it goes all the way down to, to empty on my, my nose tank. I still probably have three or four gallons in the mains. So I'm, I need to top it off to see exactly what I burned, but in two hours and 45 minutes, I certainly didn't burn the 14 gallons out of the mains. I'm probably in the 12 gallon range, really. Now, all out, how much money would you have invested in this airplane? <laughs> um, I've got about $3,000 worth of materials, firewall back, but I've rebuilt every piece of this airplane three times trying to find the perfect combination. So I've got a little bit more money you know, total, but still, it's uh, it's probably less than five thousand dollar investment, not counting the motor. And how much time do you figure you have in actually building this to to get it so that you could do your first flight on it? <laughs> uh, well, I kept up with a log book for the FAA, um, but I'm not sure exactly how accurate that was. That was it was three years of off and on building, um, and then two years of rebuilding everything on it to to really get it refined. That means that these control sticks have been uh, changed twice, redesigned twice, uh, cut into the wing and redid the aileron linkage two or three times, um, chopped the wing tips off, put three different stabilizers on it, uh, rebuilt the vertical and the rudder twice, just looking for the perfect combination. So right now, everything's balanced, everything's real nice. Um, and I found that combination, that, that, that perfect combination. So that's when I recovered it, repainted it, and gosh, it's been flying since uh, 2015 is with nothing but oil changes since. I made a tow ring, basically like a glider tow ring, so I could tie it down and, and start it. But after my first trip to Sun and Fun, I realized that not every FBO or not every uh, tarmac has got a place to tie down. So while I'm hand starting because of those issues, I was uh, needing the aid of somebody else to hold the airplane back. So, I came up with this parking brake, which I think is kind of cool. Well, my wife didn't particularly appreciate me taking her workout tubing, but with an over center cam, then I can pull the brakes on and off. It holds the airplane level. I can hand prop and it doesn't run over me on asphalt anymore. So that's kind of neat. Um, another thing that uh, came about uh, with the first couple of test flights, at least with the autopilot while I was testing the autopilot, is that I didn't realize, even with all the general aviation flying that I'd done, that any of these small airplanes, basically any airplane really, uh, when you release ailerons, they come back close to center, but not perfectly centered. 
the only reason I realized it is because while I had the autopilot working, when I came out of a turn left or right, I was noticing that my trim tabs were offset, sometimes left, sometimes right. That's when I realized that uh, these ailerons were only centering to within a couple of degrees. Now I've rebuilt this system multiple times, cut into the wing multiple times, reworked, re-engineered the ailerons to make them light and comfortable and balanced with the airplane. The last thing that I wanted to do was to uh, tackle that problem like some of the other airplanes have with a centering spring that would, would bias it to the middle every time. So I came up with this idea. Seat comes right out. Off the torque tube of the control rod, or the control stick rather, I've got an aluminum tube in contact with the close contact with another aluminum tube and these uh, super strong neodymium super magnets that are out now for um, for the RC world especially that's what happens in those outrunner motors so now I've just let the magnets center themselves there's enough pressure on the stick that you don't feel it while you're flying especially once you break the field there is no spring that I'm fighting and it's enough to, to dead center the stick every time now when I put a passenger in the right seat, the airplane will list slightly to the right so the receiving magnet is on a worm gear, quarter 20, so I can even trim that left and right um, whether I'm solo or not. Um, Do you get any sleep at night? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Actually that, one, that, that came to me in my sleep, so um, I get a little bit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just all this little stuff that, you know, to make it so that it's your airplane the way that you want it to be. Uh, well, yeah, well there, there, there are a lot of unique features and you have to look all over the airplane to, to find little things here and there that... Um, you, you, even your gas cap, uh, you, it's magnetic or Velcroed on or something? It, it's magnetic, yeah. Um, it cleans the airplane up and that's the reason why my initial or my early flights, the airplane was only about 85 or 90 mile an hour airplane and now it's 135 mile an hour airplane after adding all the fillets and the fairings and and um, fuel cap covers and and things that really reduce the drag. It's the attention to detail, all the small stuff that really adds up and makes a huge drag penalty. Uh, I'll have to show you those. Let's do that. So you have uh, uh, tanks in both wings. Dave, there's a uh, there's a wing tank either side and the vent is the cap itself so on a long cross country when I was you know a couple of three hours en route the low pressure on top of the wing was actually keeping the cap from venting uh, so I was still running off the, the main tank but I had either had to slow down or stop to let these replenish the fuel in the in the nose tank so I needed to, to cover that up so I molded these out of ABS um, which keeps the the vacuum off the cap. I introduce a little bit of positive pressure for the pitot in the nose. Um, I sucked these out of ABS plastic to get the shape right. I made the hinge point behind the center of lift so that they, they want to stay on with just minimum effort because it's a fabric wing and the last thing you want is a big screwdriver up here with cam locks or anything like that. So just a, a little bit of magnetic force will hold those on. They've been working great for 150 hours and uh, and they're, they're pretty slick. And this is a real nice finish on this wing or the whole airplane, but you're actually just using uh, house paint? Yeah, yeah, well, this is a $3,000 airplane. And the only reason it went to sun and fun the first time is because a friend of mine, um, and me did uh, built an air cam that was real nice so we wanted to take it down and show it off and uh, he said we are to take the woodpecker with it so i thought that was a great idea but at the time it looked like frankenstein because i'd cut into the wing i'd changed the stab i'd made so many modifications to the airplane to get it to fly right so obviously i, I couldn't take it to sun and fun like that so i recovered and repainted and uh, he said man you got it flying so good you really ought to put a nice paint job on it um and I agreed for a moment, but then when I realized that it was going to take a $3,500 paint job to equal what we put on the air cam on a $3,000 airplane, 
that just wasn't the woodpecker way. So right back to latex house paint, and um, I think I proved that you can get a good finish for for a hundred bucks. Now, are you using a specific brand of house paint? Well, um, I've got a Sherwin Williams sticker on the <laughs> on the rudder, and um, I was kind of hoping to get sponsored by them too. Yet again, I haven't heard from them. Now, are you using any special primer or anything else to make it to? So that no, actually, uh, this is Sherwin Williams primer. The uh, the lightning bug uh, uses basically the same system, although I do use the Stewart Systems primer. It makes the makes the fabric a little bit stiffer than the rubbery Sherwin Williams primer, so that that's a that's a better system. Yeah. And you're using uh, the Stewart's uh, process then for uh, gluing and so on. I've got styrofoam ribs in the wing. So um, the Stewart's water-based contact cement is much friendlier on styrofoam than MEK. Well, unfortunately, there's no plans available for it, and I don't have a YouTube channel yet on it. You don't have a YouTube channel on it yet. So hopefully uh, you're taking off, what, tomorrow morning? That's the plan, yes, sir. Yeah. So hopefully tomorrow morning I'll grab some uh, video of you taking off and uh, flying around, and uh, maybe we'll see you at one of the other shows coming up. That, uh, that sounds like a good plan. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the morning okay. on the way back home. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dave.